Number one, resetting your calculator. This hack returns your calculator back to its factory settings and clears all the memory. It's a good idea to reset your calculator before an exam or quiz. To reset your calculator, press shift, nine, three, equals, and then the all clear button. Number two, changing the fraction display on your calculator. Is your calculator displaying fractions like this? Change it back to the normal fraction display by pressing shift, mode, one, one. As you can see, we have now fixed the problem. Number three, do you need to check quickly if a number is prime? Enter your number and press the equal sign. Then press shift and then the degrees, minutes, seconds button. If nothing happens, then the number is prime. So 97 is prime. You can see in the second example that when the degrees, minute, seconds button is pressed, it writes 84 as a product of its prime factors, which indicates that 84 is not prime. Number four, the highest common factor, also known as the greatest common divisor, can be easily found using your calculator. Follow the steps on the screen, and as you can see, the highest common factor of 24 and 80 is eight. Keep this little time-saving hack in mind during your next exam. Number five, the lowest common multiple is also easy to find on your calculator. As you can see, the lowest common multiple of 24 and 40 is 120. Make sure to also remember this time-saving trick for your next maths quiz. Number six, to convert from a mixed fraction to an improper fraction, first enter your mixed fraction. When you press the equal sign, it will automatically convert it to an improper fraction. To convert an improper fraction to a mixed fraction, enter your improper fraction and press equals. Then press shift and the SD button to convert it to a mixed fraction. Number seven, rounding a decimal. In this example, I will be using pi and demonstrating how to round it to two decimal places. Press shift, then mode. Now we press number six, which is the fix option. You could now press any number between zero and nine, depending on the number of decimal places you want to round to. In this example, I'm going to press two. You can see that pi has been rounded to two decimal places. Here is another example, this time rounding to five decimal places. Note that the calculator stores this setting, so all calculations that you enter will be rounded to whatever number of decimal places you have set. To remove this setting, press shift, mode, eight, or norm, and then the number two. Or you can reset your calculator to factory settings, what you learn in trick number one. Number eight, to convert a fraction to a decimal, first enter your fraction. Press the equal sign and then press the SD button. To convert a number with a decimal point to a fraction, enter your number. Press the equal sign and then press the SD button. Number nine, adding a frequency column. When you enter statistics mode, your calculator's default setting will not automatically display a frequency column. However, sometimes when entering data, this would be useful. So to add a frequency column, press shift, mode, down, three, and one, and then go through these same steps to turn it off again. Number 10, the calculator defaults to degrees mode. You should see a small letter D at the top of your screen. Always check this before going into an exam. It could have a big impact on your answers if you are doing a trig exam and your calculator is in radians mode. Trust me, this has happened to me. If you do need to put your calculator into radians mode, press shift mode four. You should now see a little R at the top of your screen. To switch back to degrees mode, press shift mode three or reset your calculator as degrees is the default setting. <laughs>